Welcome back to the Isaac Abrams Show, everybody. I am your host, Isaac Abrams. Today's very special guest, comedian, podcaster, golfer, streamer, and philanthropist, Mr. Mark Smalls. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for having me, bro. Well, thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. Uh, understand that you're just coming off a little rental car situation. Yes, I am. And this is great because it, it really feels like I'm talking to the principal right now. Yeah. Is this is this what you try to go off as the I, I was principal? going for the late night thing, like the Conan oh, late vibe. Night thing? Oh, my bad to <laughs> just shit on your whole late night vibe. But I have been wanting to talk to you about your school performance. This is, I mean, you got the fucking principal yeah. thing right yeah. up there. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at just, you know, the sign back here. I feel like a little bit like I'm in trouble. My degrees. Oh, you are. Yeah. You are in trouble. I know. My first job out of high school was working at a rental car company. Oh, really? So I'm going to take the position of the rental car company. Oh, fuck off, you can- dude. <laughs> Every fucking time I go into one of these places, dude, I literally, it's, it's a fucking two hour event. Yeah. And and people do not like hanging out with me because of the time. Because I'm very like non-compliant with your bullshit yeah you know you need your fucking they got to have 12 forms of identification <laughs> you need 12 different fucking references yeah. and a water bill a blood and it's sample like, for what yeah. you're fucking giving me a dodge dart dude yeah it's a fucking minivan i'll smash this minivan into a fucking wall <laughs> and what are you gonna do call one of my references to yeah. tell them about it yeah it makes no sense hey brandy we got mark here he wrecked the car whatever not the dodge not the dart not the fucking dart which isn't even the one you had reserved anyway because it's we, not we had we ran out of some no, sm- I, I had a fucking i had a nice hybrid mm-hmm. uh utility vehicle yeah no but they look at me and they're like uh, we're giving this guy the fucking dart yeah i crashed my car on tuesday i go in there uh, you know i crashed my car thank god you know i used to crash cars all the time so i've always paid for the best insurance yeah you know full coverage i bought a brand new car in 2018 it's got full coverage on it with the rental car coverage so that way if this ever happens i go into the rental car place scot-free boom yeah so i get the reservation and then it just starts you know it starts on today eight o'clock in the morning i'm calling for the reservation we don't have it oh they reserved it in fucking northern california so then i gotta gotta call corporate to then get them to fucking switch the reservation i get in i go in there oh the you know i get to the enterprise place they say oh you know it's uh it says renter pays here i go that's that's fucking not true that ain't it i'm not paying Mm -mm. it's so then i gotta call the insurance company again they do the reservation oh we got it now it's all good Oh, you only have a debit card. Oh, you're fucked with a debit card. Oh, yeah. You need a $9,000 deposit. Yeah, no, I'm so sorry that I I, I don't have fucking $80,000 in credit card debt. (laughs) I I only have a debit card. I don't fuck with credit cards. I don't fuck with it. You spend what you have. I spend what I have. I I live with roommates. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying a home anytime soon. I don't fucking need one. Well, if you're going to want this rental car, you're going to need to get one. (laughs) Yeah? Well, guess what, dog? We're going to have to fucking fight now. Yeah. So I'm fucking like, all right, uh, 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 what do we do here? Well, we need, you know, where's, you know, where's the body shop? I don't fucking know where the body shop's at. It's not even at a body shop. I'm the customer. I'm the, I'm, and I'm not even the one that booked the reservation. I don't fucking work for you. Yeah, that's, there should be some kind of agency that like is a go between to handle all this shit. Like, so you can just go about your day yeah, and they can wait in line for you and like, oh, we had to call this person, that person. That person. Just tell me when the car. I mean, I, I mean, I guess that's like when you get a little more clout, a little more famous, you get to have your your assistant do these types of things. Right. And then they're going to say, oh, no, we need we need Mr. Smalls to come in. Yeah. In person. Yeah. Yeah. And but, then, you know, not me coming in on my fucking penny board looking like this. They're like, yeah. we're not renting a car to this fucking guy. Yeah because of your appearance and so they're like we need references and i at first i tell the fucking guy i'm like dude i'm not giving you fucking references like dude what so what you they can compile your email list yeah it's just that's all it is yeah 100 so i can make you guys more money i'm not gonna fucking do it yeah and he goes oh let me talk to my manager so he goes to talk to that and they're doing the thing in the back of the room where he's talking to his manager but they're talking about me 12 feet away and I hear the whole conversation <laughs> and so finally I'm like hey yo Cindy yeah I'm right here by the way it's not invisible you can uh, you could totally just talk to me and she goes you're gonna have to give me five minutes and I was like Cindy for you 
I'll give you 10. <laughs> so then she comes. Well, we need all this bullshit. Finally, I'm just like, you know what? You need the, the, the body shop thing. I just Google search the body shop. I go, this is where it's at. Write that in for the address. References. Uh, give you Julie Martell, which is like, <laughs> I don't know where I got this name from. Yeah. F fucking random number. And she goes, what's your second reference? I go, uh, it's Michelle Julie. And she goes, <laughs> Brian Bryan. Yeah. She goes, that's a little, that's odd. I go, it's a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. How long have you known them? Years. Yep. Years. And they know how many cars I rent. Let me tell you. Fucking ridiculous, bro. Yeah. And then they fucking give me a minivan. Hilarious. A fucking, I'm driving around in a fucking minivan, dude. They're great on gas. That's is eight. it? No. No. <laughs> no. Which is perfect for me. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm not driving to butt fuck Indiana for every goddamn show I'm doing for $20 out here. Yeah. Well, at least you can take every other comic on the show with you. Oh, dude, I can, I can jam, I can jam like 12 comics and two comic photographers in this place. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So Let's my go. reels clips are about to be fucking fruitful, dude. <laughs> I'm about to be posting so many fucking clips on the reels. Hell yeah. Dude, so many subtitles. All the subtitles. Yeah. Don't skip a word. But you can also fit a bunch of golf clubs in there too, right? I could fit a couple of fucking bags. And I, you know, in my car right now, I have that's at the body shop that will not be specified. There's like another three sets of golf clubs in there. I have like five bags just by, by myself right now. That's a lot. Of yeah, golf. you know this whole shit with the golf thing is uh, is kind of crazy. Like, Did it start off as just for fun, or was it like everybody got together, planned it out? It was like how'd the golf thing get going? Oh, so the 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 podcast that I do, I don't know if I can, I, I do mind if I plug it. It's called Please. Country Club Adjacent. Plug everything. Um, so it uh, it started. I I had been a golfer since I was like twenty, twenty one. You know, grew up skateboarding. Then when that kind of didn't pan out, I started doing golfing. Um, and then when I moved down here, I moved down here in April of 2020, everything was shut down. Golfing was kind of the only thing that was still open. April. That was like 30 days after the shutdown. Like yeah, everything was right like, at lockdown. I was, I was living in San Francisco. Our lease, our lease was up and uh, it was very expensive to live up there. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing going on. And right. it was even more shut down up there. Oh, yeah. And so I had already planned on coming down here. So fuck it. Let's just do it now. Yeah. Might as well do it while everything's shut down. That way, like, you, you know, there's, you're not getting any FOMO from being back up. There's wherever. nothing to miss out on. Yeah. It's all shut down. And so, and so the golfing thing just started. I got a random call from um, uh, this comic, Jake Adams, uh, who's putting together like a golfing RV road trip thing for like a TV pilot. Mm -hmm. um, and he was telling me, you know, there's two other comics or three other comics that are coming, two other comics that are coming. I had known one, one was a uh, comic Griff Pippen. I had met him at a couple of shows down here throughout the years. Another one was uh, Aristotle Georgeson, who goes by Blake Weber on Instagram. And we're like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna fucking do this like TV pilot thing. Um, we're taking like this, you know, big RV. We're going to play a bunch of courses for free. Everything's comp. We're going to film. All the food's paid for. And I was like, I had just moved down to yeah. LA. And I was like. You got nothing else to do. Uh, and not only that, but I was like, oh, I fucking made it already, dude. Like, I'm already <laughs> filming TV pilots. I'm here for one day. Dude. I'm and I got a pilot. Dude, I got a fucking pilot. Should've I don't even have an agent, ago. a manager. Yeah. Like, let's fucking go, dog. Right. And I'm thinking full tv crew i'm thinking like i'm picturing tony hawk's gigantic skate park tour yeah but for golfing i'm picturing that tour bus star wagons dude i'm picturing all this shit catering dude. yeah <laughs> absolutely not no no it was the fucking worst trip ever oh really oh it was fucking horrendous dude. no oh the rv we didn't even get the rv the first day we had to go pick it up from someone's like house and it was just dead and it was a piece of shit. It was a borrow RV. Oh, it was a fuck. I don't know what the fuck. What does borrow mean? Just a somebody had. You didn't rent it. Like. it oh, a bar. <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought that was like the type of fucking company, a borrow. Yeah, that there's my bar. That's my 42 foot borrow yeah, right that's, there. That's my bar, my Dodge Dart borrow right there, dude. It's the it's the saline edition. Yeah. Yeah, it was a borrow RV. It's got it was it. like some dude's grandpa's RV that died in it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I think he was living in it still. Oh, cool. we, we just were never allowed to open up his room. Yeah. It was a fucking piece of shit. Oh, he came with you. He was just in the back the whole oh, time. Oh yeah, he was just yeah. No, he wasn't there. He was yeah. He was in the fucking. It was a piece of shit, dude. Yeah. And like we're sleeping on the fucking floor of this. You know, day one, I'm like, oh, all the courses are panned out. Day one, we already had trouble at the first course. The second day, we're like not even in. We're like going to pick up the RV. I was like, where are we playing tomorrow? And Jake's like, oh, we don't have. We don't have a course lined up for tomorrow. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here? All the courses are straight. The film crew are is just the RV driver and then someone in the van following us with another camera. That was just like two cameras. Two cameras. And I was like, this isn't a TV pilot. Yeah. This is like a piece of shit fucking back alley production that I just signed up for for a whole week. Welcome to LA. Yeah, dude, that's, that, that was the perfect introduction to Los Angeles. Oh, the peaks and valleys of shooting pilots in LA. Yeah, dude, like, I was like, oh, this is what it is. Like, it's just nothing. But it's better, I think, that it, you started that way, because if you did roll in with like tour buses and free golf shit and the courses are lined up and like, then you would have started at the top. Yeah, hundred percent. You just, you know, now you manage your expectations. It can't get any worse. Yeah, so, and, and usually I'm like, this it, everything's gonna suck anyway. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like my base level of like, man, f fuck this. It's gonna suck no matter what. That way I'm always impressed somewhat. But something must have gone right because the show's doing well. Some went right. So after that, we did this whole week thing of filming and shit. Had a panic attack. Tried to call my girlfriend to get me pick me up in the desert at like the nearest airport, but we had um, we had a uh, we had um, a good like dynamic, you know. Yeah. And so we decided from there, you know, the company that kind of paid for the pilot was like, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay for a couple of episodes of a podcast because you guys do got good chemistry. Yeah. So nothing came of the pilot. You know, the podcast we started and then after the podcast started, we just kind of hit the ground running, bro. Like yeah. it really like podcast started doing well. I think we did really well with, um, you know, Jake was very well fluent on like how to grow an Instagram page. Sure. He was already in that business. He was running a couple of big golf Instagram accounts. That helps. And so he was able to kind of share some things from them, but also he knew the groundwork of how to grow. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, you got to We got to start making memes. So me and him just hit the ground on like golf memes, you know, really kind of like if you look at golf memes today, mm -hmm. like that, that was a lot of us on like pioneering. Like it's kind of a niche, right? Mm -hmm. But we were the first ones to be really making like video memes about golf. And I'm talking like I'm watching old episodes of Sopranos and I'm pulling Sopranos memes. I'm pulling yeah. these down and down memes. Mm -hmm. There was nothing like that in the fucking golf. Now you look at golf. It was all. Oh, it's yeah. all like Sopranos and shit. It's like mm -hmm. I fucking we started that way, yeah. dude. You're the OGs. OGs of the Sopranos, the the Breaking Bad, the fuck like all this like shit that was like that really helped grow our account for yeah. sure. You know. And is it? I saw some episodes in the studio. And then you guys go out and film. Is the filming on the course, is that bonus content or are you guys podding from the course too? Um, we have done a couple of pods on the course. We do our, we record our pod at, um, at uh, Friday Beers is another Instagram account. Mm -hmm. They have an office in Venice. They also have like a little built-in studio. So we record our podcast in studio there. That's kind of also where we have all our content meetings and stuff. Yeah. Then we also film uh, stuff on the course for YouTube um and chop up those clips for instagram i mean it's like a whole fucking thing oh i get it we got the instagram we have patreon content that goes up mm -hmm. that's like kind of like uncensored stuff that we do on the course that could probably get us canceled yep you know a couple of impressions things of that nature um and then like everything also gets chopped up for tiktok yeah if we're going to a course and we're playing with like a guest sometimes we'll just do the pod from there 
Yeah. But most of the time, it just happens in studio. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Are you I, a golfer at all? I do. I own three sets of golf clubs. No shit. But no one has ever accused me of being a golfer. Hey, look at me, dog. I shoot around 90. That's good. That's You're a good golfer. I can. I, my short game is great. That's I cannot good. putt. You can't putt. I can get to the green. So your short game's not good. My my chips are Oh, great. your chips. Around the green is not Once nice. I'm on the green, I'm a three to five putter. That's not good, bro. No, I can't Why putt. Why is that? I can't putt. I can putt putt golf, but I can't putt putt on real courses. Really? I just, ne- I can't see the line. I can't you read can't the see co- the line? I can't see shit. You got like a depth perception problem, maybe? No, it, I just fucking. They- I can help you, bro. All right. I can help you with your putting. Because I'm a horrible driver of the golf ball. But I, around the greens, I'm fucking money. I had a goal to go over here in um, Studio City. Yeah. And just take my driver every night and get a $10 bucket and try and hit it over the fence. So Over there at Weddington, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, for a while, I was getting a pretty decent power stroke. You know, I was doing like two, 215, 220. I wasn't like, I don't know what their back wall is, but. I think the back wall there is like 260. Yeah. Everyone, I'd get lucky every once in a while and hit the top. Of the yeah. I don't think I ever went over. Yeah. But All my buddies pound the fucking ball. They can go, yeah. they can, they can kill someone on that course. Yeah. If the cor- if the, if the hole is downhill and the wind goes the right way, I could probably hit 300. Wow. That's a good driver. Yeah. That's a really good driver. It's a shitty $40 driver out of the bargain bin over here at Roger Dunn. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a bit, place is a bane of my fucking existence too. Yeah. You guys getting golf sponsorships now? Yeah. We're, um, you know. Uh, we don't have like a club deal or anything, um, but it's growing. Mm-hmm. We're doing a couple of things. We're working with uh, like an alcohol company now. We're also in talks with um, kind of like the adjacent tour to the PGA Tour right now, which is called the Live Tour. I just looked that up. Do you know what Live stands for? Uh, it stands for um, uh, fuck, dude. I should know this since we're gonna be working with them. It's, it's like Roman a, numerals for the number fifty four. There you go, dog. Yeah. There it is, dude. This is this is their description from I think it's some an article. Yeah. Fifty four is the lowest score you could shoot if you were to birdie every hole on a par seventy two course. Mm-hmm. So there's an aspirational aspect to the thinking. It is also the number of holes to be played in each event. Yes. So they do three round tournaments. Yeah. Instead of the four round tournaments, which is nice. It's yeah. nice. Um. So. We've we started working with them recently. Um, we've been to two of their events, and um, I think we're gonna be at every event. That's we're, great. We're just kind of um, waiting for some red tape stuff to go through. You do know? you? This might be early days to answer this, but do you? Are they gonna let you guys bring your crew and film you while you're playing in the in the in the tournament? Oh, so this isn't no. This is like it's legit. It's a legit. Yeah, thing. we don't play in this tournament. Oh, you don't play. No, 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 no. This is like PGA Tour. Right. Which is like, we don't. Top, top. Yeah. This is like, there's no. You're not You're not there yet? What are you shooting these days? Dog, <laughs> I'm not a fucking golfer, bro. <laughs> oh, you're on a golf show. Wait, dude. yeah, dog. Like, hold on. Like, just, do you uh, think I'm like a fucking golf pro? I watched like eight I'm clips. I'm a fucking comedian. I think I don't even have a credit card. You think I'm a fucking <laughs> golf pro? Well, I just watched the shot tracker and your shit's pretty straight. Yeah, I can hit the fucking ball, but yeah. I'm not going on tour. <laughs> All right, man. Dude, look at me, bro. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Do your fucking research. You think I'm a fucking go? This guy thinks I'm a fucking pro? I mean, you could be. No, dog. Jesus Christ. <laughs> is anybody they don't even on let the... us play in the fucking pro-am, dude. No, no one is playing on the fucking live tour. <laughs> We took a fucking RV to play cheap courses for free. Yeah, but you're blowing up on on YouTube and the internet. Like, yeah, but that's sports. Yeah. So. It's, do you not know how sports works? I don't know how sports work. Just because I'm blowing up on the fight doesn't mean I'm going to play NBA basketball but, because I have a basketball podcast. Oh, that's true. You know? Yeah. No, they're okay, not going to let us so, fucking play. All right. No. So Look, they, it's, it's live is new. Yeah. I didn't know if they just wanted to drive traffic in and. No, I get it. No, I get it. No. So they're, they're, they're driving traffic by stealing all the, basically it'd be like if the NBA had a different professional basketball league come in yeah. and they go, all right, we're buying, <laughs> we're buying teams. Yeah. So they would, they purchased the Celtics, they purchased the Nets, they purchased the fucking thing. And they're like, no more Celts, Nets. And Mavs, yeah, they're coming to the fucking LIV basketball tour. Yeah, that's what they did for golf. They basically said we're taking, and they're they're continuing to do it. So they mm-hmm. took players like Dustin Johnson, Phil Mickelson, 
Um, they just took Cam Smith, Bubba Watson. All these guys are like top pros. Yeah. Top winning pros. One of the guys just won a major, one of the, the open out, out there in Scotland. Yeah. So it's like they, the competition is at, at a high, at just as high of a level as the PGA Tour. Yeah. But it's just different, a little different format. And they just haven't found their home on a network yet. They haven't found their home on a network because, yeah, I mean, it's it's brand new. They still don't know. Um, they still don't know, like, if this tour is going to count towards, like, the world golf rankings. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, like, um, uh, PGA Tour is pissed about it. They oh, a, yeah. They, they're if they're furious they're like if you play for these guys you can't fuck with us at yeah all. which yeah. there's lawsuits now like that might not be legal yeah because of antitrust issues yeah. like that might not be a legal thing to do you know so there's all this red tape about it but it seems like the live is here to stay they definitely have the financial backing yeah for it if, as long as they get a tv deal in the next two three years they should be fine i mean they don't even money. yeah they don't even i mean Truth be told, they don't need the TV deal to um, have the money. Yeah. You know, it's they're not going to run. Shit. The 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 tour is run by like like Saudi oil royalty. Yeah. And so it's like the money's just going to be there. Even if they just made their own app and it was like yeah, I think they like, have an app sure. and they're streaming through YouTube and their app, but they're just. I think they're still just waiting for the right TV deal. Yeah. I don't think any of the TV networks want to touch it right now because of the whole PGA Tour issue. Sure. And they don't want this bad like taste and blood. They also, I think, want to see if it's going to stay and if it's like a real thing, which yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it is. Well, whoever gets them first is going to save a hell of a lot of money because they're going to get a cheap deal at first. And I think then so, too. The renegotiation in three or five years is going to be billions yeah. and billions of yeah. dollars. I think so, too. And they're already scheduled for next year's tour. So yeah. I, I don't think you're buying up these like top-notch PGA pros for hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. and then saying like, yeah, nah, we're just going to fold after a year. That's not and how this works. It's guaranteed money. These guys are like, I got to go out here on the PGA and win to get this money. Or yeah. I can just take this paycheck yeah. right now and play however I want. Yeah, it's all it's all crazy to me because a, a lot of the bad press comes from like where the money comes from. Mm -hmm. And the PGA Tour has done a really good job of being like, this is like Saudi money. It's dirty, this and that. Talking shit. Yeah, they're talking shit. But it's like, what do you think the fucking PGA Tour... From day one, I've always been like, it's a fucking money laundering scheme anyway. 100%. PGA Tour is a fucking nonprofit, and their head made $10 million last year. Wow. And where does the money come from? The banks. Oh, yeah. I've oh, and the banks are so fucking nice. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Not to mention that 25 of the events that are spon are sponsored with Saudi money as well. It all comes from the same place. Yeah. The PGA Tour just knows they're fucked. They've been fucking doing a shitty job uh, 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 broadcasting their, the tour. Yeah. They've been doing a shitty job socially wise, like social media. Yeah. Why well, can't they get their head around that? It's a fuck. Because they're old white cucks. Hire a 13-year-old TikToker. Dude, Figure it out. It's insane to me, yeah. bro. They got the... Uh, that famous, uh, the guy with the Irish voice. They got him over at Live now, too. They just stole Oh, him. David Faraday. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, if you get the voice of golf. Yeah. And people, that's what people take naps watching golf on Sunday. Listen to, they listen to David's voice all the time. If he moves yeah. over here, yeah. I'm moving over here. Mm -hmm. It's like when Joe Rogan moved to Spotify. It's like, well, time to get fucking Spotify. Yeah, 100%. 100%. That would be an interesting deal if Live was exclusively available on Spotify. If, they, if those two giants got together. Yeah, and then they let me play in the tournament. Yeah. That would be kind of tight, bro. So how do you guys participate? Do you get to go play the course like the day before? <laughs> Don't fucking die, bro. Are you going to let you play in that? No, they're not going to fucking let me play in it. Just slicing balls into the fucking gallery. Um, no, I mean like, well. So the first event we went to, it basically it's just like for social media content, right? Yeah. They they're kind of have a they're kind of like in, it's getting better but kind of like a bad name so we're going there to show off like hey this is actually a pretty good fucking time yeah so the first event was in Portland we went out there you know did a bunch of stuff they gave us media passes they let us inside the ropes and then um, you know one of the big things that like went viral for us was you know at the press conference they uh, 
you know, it's like just sports journalists, you know, like asking right. dumb shit at the press conference. Like, well, bro, you, know, you took your seven iron back of, on hole seven. Yeah. Was it like no one gives a shit? Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. And the, the guy doesn't even know the answer to that question. Like, I and, fucking play and, and, you know, doing a golf podcast, I think a lot of people think that that's what we talk about. When yeah. you hear golf, you're like, oh, yeah, well, what kind of four irons are you? We're not, we don't care. Tid- We're talking about like, balls. Yeah, yeah, funny shit that happens on the course. And so that's what we're going to ask at the press conference. So we asked like funny questions to him and they were fucking blown away. The clips went fucking viral. Yeah. Like uh, my buddy asked one of the golfers, Dustin, he was like, uh, Dustin, uh, why is my father's love conditional? <laughs> Which was like a funny question. And you could see they were like, but they were relieved that, you know, a lot of these questions were like, what would you say to the victims of 9-11? You know, it's like, because you're taking money from Saudi, right. from Saudi Arabia. And it's like, dude, I'm a fucking golfer. Yeah. Like, let's fucking, let's ease up a little bit, bud. Right. So they liked that. I think the golfers like really liked it. You know, then we started asking funnier questions, more in tune with the golfing. Yeah, but you just broke the ice a little bit. Broke the ice a little like, bit. We're gonna get silly in here. Yeah, Y'all we're can getting get a little silly. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to change journalism. Right. But we're trying to make it. We're trying to add a little spice to it. That way, these clips can do something. You yeah. Because it is stuffy in those. Oh, it's oh, Jesus. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Bro. So I mean, that's great for you guys. That's got to be. You know, it's just, you see all these, any sport, you see these after show interviews and it's just like, can we just get one joke in here? Something, bro. Yeah. And not only that, we're, we're even good with like alley-ooping it to them so that they can fucking make the funny comment, mm-hmm. you know, like, and show off their personality. So they like that. We came back to New Jersey um, and then more just inside the ropes access, just filming YouTube content, filming some sketches with like hitting camera stuff. Mm-hmm. At the one in Jersey, um, we were playing in, we had the opportunity to do like the Pro-Am, which is usually the day before a golf tournament is like the celebrity tournament. Yeah. Where like some of the pros come out and they play with like amateurs, usually like celebrities. And then, you know, in like a little tournament. And so you did get to play? No, because we didn't play in that. Oh we, God, I'm striking yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When is the last time you played golf? Ah, uh, fuck, years ago, bro. Uh... No, we do this thing called the back off challenge. Yeah. Because we're comedians, we roast. Mm -hmm. It kind of came up naturally. Like if we're playing on a course, we're just shitting on each other. Yeah. And so most of the time when you're golfing, you want to be quiet. Um, And there's like this like point of tension where like right when you set your club down and you're about to swing, everyone gets real quiet. Yeah. Well, like if you say something like funny, you're fucked, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like, I, I, me and my buddy used to do it to each other. Um, and then it just kind of came naturally when I started hanging out with these guys. And we filmed like one clip that just like was so funny. And then we're like, fuck, we should do this like a lot more because this like translates well. This is better than a meme. Yeah. It's showing our personalities and the, the clips are doing well. And it happens in every round of golf. Every round of golf. One of your buddies is going to be like, eh, balls. And then, you know. Yeah, and like, you know, we'll go like, we go hard, dude, like personal. Like, and we're like, we're just like, oh, nice shorts. Did you get those at the fucking kids section at Bonaba? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and then like real, real personal stuff. Of like, right like, on oh, the yeah. backswing. Not not like so much of that, but just like as they're walking up to the shot, as they're about to shoot. Yeah. Not trying to be like, nice shot, jackass, and like, <laughs> like fuck them up that way. Like, yeah. that's, that's me. Yeah. This is more like, trying to get you to laugh and back off your shot yeah and reset that's the name of the game so that's what we were doing out there at the program yeah you know these celebrities would come by and we'd be like hey we do this thing do you mind if we like roast you while you swing and most people like it 95 percent of the people liked it i think two people said that they didn't want to do it because they were playing in a big money match yeah but but if you're out of the money already you might as well get a clip out of it exactly yeah exactly that's good for your sponsors Yeah. yeah 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 Yeah, that's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, it was. It's it's been cool. It's been cool. Yeah, that's somebody a, needed to come by and lighten golf up. You know? Yeah, I mean, like there wasn't. I think that's the thing that we started doing this thing. There, when you go play golf, especially at these Muni courses, you see the clientele that plays it. It's not the clientele that watches the PGA Tour. Right. There's like a very big despair. I mean, I come from the skateboarding world. And there's all sorts of these old old pro skateboarders that, that golf now because it's yeah. a very similar thing. Yeah, it's it's muscle memory. It's it's rewarding mm-hmm. mentally 
to like put your mind to do something, do something with your muscle memory. Like yeah. that's the same thing as like doing a kickflip is hitting a seven iron. Right. And then if to get to the point where you can kickflip, you have to have done it thousands of thousands times. Thousands of times. So it's all repeating. Yeah. It's all repeating. So uh, we were seeing this and we're like, yeah, I mean like there's this whole market of golfers that just aren't being spoken to, you know? And so that's kind of, I think where we filled in the gap a little bit. And there was definitely YouTube golfers. Yeah. You know, there's like people like um, uh, Good Good uh, Golf, which is like a huge YouTube account. And they're like really good golfers, young kids. And it's a little more like liver. It's yeah. like younger, fresh, but it's still not. It's still it's, stuffy a little bit. It's still stuffy. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's still like these are country club kids. Yeah. We're not country club kids. No. We're adjacent to the country club. Right. We're not the worst Muni golfers. Like we're still sticks. We you, can still play you used to skate the parking lot of the golf oh yeah 100 percent. Yeah. yeah i would get kicked out for trying to steal the golf carts yeah you know? i just just now realized when you said golf and skating have a parallel that everyone that i golf with is also a skater oh really yeah i yeah. never even put that together it's like we would skate and then we would go golf yeah or vice versa it's it's extremely similar yeah like when i you know i grew up skateboarding my pops tried to give me a golf i fucking was like i don't like this shit yeah and then when i stopped trying to be a professional skateboarder and like you know had to fill the void of like doing something if i wasn't skating all the time and like didn't want to go try to fucking throw huck myself down something when i started going to the golf course i was like why do i like this so much yeah and i realized like Dude, it's all just doing tricks. Right. You know? You're still outside. You're still outside. Getting some You're getting some exercise, but the act of swinging a golf club is a, is is doing a trick on a skateboard pretty yeah. much. Yeah. The technical variabilities of like your golf swing and the technique that you need to have for skating are Yeah. It's, it's all muscle precise. memory. It's like repeating yeah. the same shit you know, but it's also like taking that muscle memory to a different point so it's like you know i can do a kickflip but kickflip down a seven stair is different so i can do a seven iron but seven iron out the rough is a little different You're yeah putting that variation yeah so it's satisfying that like risk reward mechanism in your brain i think yeah and you can play the same course every day and not have the same round you can skate the same park every yes. day and not go on the same run a hundred percent yeah a hundred percent and that's cool like i i i really and style, you know? Yeah. It's like super stylish. People got different styles. It's the same thing. It's all like, it's very like art shit. I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot. Like, you know, oh, little bro, skateboarding's art. <laughs> so is golf. But it is. It's true. Yeah, you can find, I mean, you can express yourself yeah. as much as you want to in either realm. Yeah. Yeah. I express myself today at the fucking Enterprise place. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> We need an employer. I'm unemployed, my friend. Uh, you're looking at him. Mm -hmm. I am my boss. I am my boss. That would, that would have been a good line to yeah, say. I work for myself. Yeah. That, or, that was a lot better than what I said. I, uh, I had a, a teacher in high school, and I was like, I was razzing her. I was like, just giving her shit. And I was like, yeah, you're just a poor teacher. She goes, I'm independently wealthy. I do this because I like it. And she just fucking took me down. And so when people are like, well, who the fuck do you work for? I go, damn. I'm independently wealthy. I just use that's it from a, now That's on. a good one, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I usually would be like this. My girlfriend has money. Okay? Yeah. My girlfriend's family is wealthy. My girlfriend is a TikToker, and mm -hmm. I shoot her on the iPhone. I'm a cameraman. Work for myself. That's um, a good gig. I've, I've seen people that have purposely gotten into relationships because... They can just tag along with their... Oh, down here, I'm sure that's fucking Definitely. super prevalent. Yeah. Where does comedy fall into that? Because we're skating and then we're golfing and then when did we start comedy? We started comedy... Um, I was just working a shitty fucking bar job. I mean, making pretty good money, but working six nights a week. Mm. Um, always was like the fucking guy that tried to get the laugh in school and shit. But like not... I wasn't like... I don't think you would ever like be like, oh, Barks fucking the funny guy you know because i was very dry but like i would remember getting those laughs at class by saying something snarky mm -hmm. um and i just remember like it was weird i remember like my buddy was like tattooing me he was like dude you're you should be a comedian and yeah. i was like what the fuck did that come from? he was like you're the funniest guy i know and i was like yeah i'm pretty fucking but like i don't and then my buddy just came in one day i was working my bar job and he was like dude I, my my, my manager at my skate shop brought me to an open mic. You should come with me. And I was like, that's like, you don't seem like, like, yeah, fuck it. I'll try it. Yeah. And then tried it and fucking liked. I don't remember my first time. 
because I got bombed. Did you write anything? Oh, yeah. I wrote word for word what I was going to say. Did you memorize it? Oh, yeah. Did you blank when you got up? Uh, I blacked out. Wow. Yeah. I remember it was weird. Like, I probably drank like eight beers before I went up. I was so nervous. Yeah. It was like a oh, shitty open mic at a fucking comedy steakhouse. Yeah. You know, and I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I thought this was like, you know, it's a shut. Like, it was just, it meant nothing, but like, I was like, this is important. This and oh, that. it means everything. It's like, yeah. this is my first time. And I brought time. like friends. Yeah, I did too. I was at a bar for my first time. I was at a bar in Hollywood that's closed now, but they had a comedy club upstairs and they had an open mic in this like other wing. And they were like, dude, you've been talking about being a comic for like three years. We just signed you up. And we sat through everybody. I was the last to go. Mm -hmm. And it was one other comic and my two buddies. And I thought, fuck it. I'm just going to tell these two stories. Mm -hmm. Fucking full bomb. Go into the next story. Full shitty bomb. And my buddies are recording it. They got two angles on oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And then for some reason, yeah. you're like, I don't want to do that again. Yeah. I was like, this is awesome. They're like, you didn't do too bad. And behind my back, they're like, he's never going to make yeah, it. Yeah. 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 And every once in a while, when I think I'm funny or do something in comedy, they'll just send me a little clip of my first oh, time. Oh, that's fucked. It's just in the group chat. That's like, so fucked. Remember dude. this? Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. that's why I can't get my buddies to come out to any shows now. I mean, yeah. I've been doing it for 10, 10, 11 years now. Yeah. And, you know, when I first started out, it was all open mics and bringers. And right. I was fucking horrible. Like, I was fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, you know, you when you get, you know you spend a little time, you're a little more serviceable, and you're like, oh, I actually kind of got the hang of this thing a little bit. Right. And they're like, nah, we we, we seen you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like... like but wait, wait. It's yeah. like when you first start your podcast, you're yeah. like, everybody watch my show. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you suck you're at that it. that shameless self-promotion. You know? Yeah. You suck at it, but you don't... Then you start getting good, and then you don't want to promote it. Right. Because you're like, ah, this is weird now. Yeah, and when, it's, when it takes on its own momentum and people are sharing it already for you, you're like, I don't want my friends to watch this shit. Yes, yeah, 100%. Because Like, I hate when friends come out to shows now. Yeah. If I see someone I know, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, don't you don't, have anything better to do? Yeah, don't yeah. do this. Don't come to me at my job and try to hang out. Yeah. No. Well, I record this so far in advance that I don't remember, you know, what, what the whole hour and a half. So yeah. on Wednesdays when this comes out, I get text messages from my friends that are just like, I didn't know that about you. And I'm like, oh, no, what? Yeah, yeah, What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. We used to do, um, when Pandy hit, I put this show on pause, season one pause, and then we did a daily pop culture show. Oh, cool. We did 428 episodes Holy in 18 months. fuck. And we, we would have to, my partner is a tour manager, so she would have to go out on tour. So we'd have to pre-record like 150 episodes. And I would get in texts on a random Thursday like, Oh, that was really funny. I'm like, dude, I don't know what episode today is because we would pre-schedule them like yeah, 30 yeah, days yeah. out in advance. Yeah. And I don't know if your friends do that or not. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, a couple of, because I, I, I do another podcast. Even with the golf one now, I'll get like texts, especially when I'm like streaming. Someone will come in and be like, drop like an inside joke from the pod. And I'm like, what? And, right. they're, like, and they're like, dude, what you said on the pod? I was like, couldn't fucking tell you, bro. I've said so many things on like, the show. I was like, couldn't fucking tell Bro, right. I, we record at 10 o'clock in the morning. I have no idea. I barely sleep. Like, yeah. I don't fucking know. Yeah, and they're just trying to bond with you. They're just trying to go, look, I'm supporting your show. And you're just like, mm. it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a mm -hmm. little tough. I'm trying to get better at that. I'm trying to get better at like the, uh, I wouldn't say the parasocial relationship, but like um, just responding responding to people that like me i think i'm just like afraid of success a little bit yeah well the comment section is it's just a dumpster fire you gotta fucking do it though you gotta respond bro you gotta go until a certain point and i think you guys are getting close to that point where yeah you can post and ghost and fucking not work. We're, we're we're still very well i mean i always look at it like this bro how did how Everybody that tells me, other than the fact that Dane Cook was a killer, like everything that you heard was like he made his own success. Not only was a killer, but responded to everybody's DMs in on MySpace. Always still does. To, still does on Instagram. Yeah, and maybe so, not this week because he just got engaged to a young lady. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what, did he get engaged? Yeah, they got engaged. Uh, my claim to fame was I shit on him in Warzone a couple times while he was playing with you. Yeah, he was playing because uh, we I play sometimes with uh, comic Eric Griffin, and yeah, he would put, uh, riffing with Griffin, riffing with Griffin, and mm -hmm. he used to put on. He still does sometimes. puts on these like custom private lobbies where like if you're a fan of the pod or friends, like you go into one match together. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was my client, dude. I fucking 
dumped on fucking Dane Cook a couple of times. I was like, here we go, dude. Nice. We fucking made it, dude. Yeah. We fucking killed Dane Cook, dude. So it was Dane. So it was you, Dane, and Eric, and who was a was a four person squad? No, no, no. It was like you know, other people were on my squad. It was just like a hundred people in a lobby. So like a hundred people. Oh, got it. You know, verse each other, all solos. Okay, cool. So everyone, battle every Royale. man, yeah, battle yeah. every every man for himself. Nice. And so like I caught Dane slipping in a bush or something, you know, and I was like, and then you know who it is because it says his name is Dane Cook on his fucking gamer tag. Wow. And I was like, let's fucking go. Yeah. Like, we did it, dude. You got cooked, bro. Dude, he did. oh, I should have done that. That would have been cool, bro. That would have been cool. That's great, Dane. But yeah, you got to respond. You got to yeah. respond. That's the great yeah. thing about Twitch streaming is like you're forced to respond to. Yeah, well, Twitch is an interactive platform, right? Mm -hmm. So I think when people are going to like spend the time to watch you stream live, they're going to be a little bit more complimentary Yes. As opposed to like, oh, I found your shit and you suck. Oh, like, you still get some haters. It yeah. is funny to see what audiences, how the audiences differ on each platform. Yeah. Because you'll see it. Audience is different on Instagram compared to YouTube, compared to TikTok. Yeah. TikTok loves me. Instagram, the comments section on our videos, usually very positive for me. Mm -hmm. YouTube fucking hates me. Every comment about me, there are some good, there are some outliers, but everyone's like, who the fuck is this fucking yeah. long hair? Why is he complaining so much? I think that's the platform. Yeah. I think YouTube yeah. is just like where people go to hate. I think so too. Yeah. I think Unless so you're too. a super fan, you're like, oh my God, you're so mm -hmm. funny, Mark. Like, yeah. I find the same thing. I can't get any traction on TikTok because I'm putting my same one minute reels on my TikTok and that's it. I don't fucking do anything else. But I also don't put a lot of effort into TikTok. I put way more effort into my reels. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of, it's funny. I have like the most followers on TikTok, but like, I just, I just don't care. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. I'm, I mean, if, if it does what it says in the terms of service that it does, yeah, I sh we should all delete it off. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's not a good app. No. I have noticed that it is beneficial though. A lot of people that we'll see at these golf tournaments, like know us from TikTok. Right. And the clips we post on TikTok, which I just thought it was all bots and shit. You know, like I thought TikTok was just full of fake people and bots and yeah. this and that. You can almost always 10X somebody's Instagram onto their same content TikTok. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, I have 100,000 followers on Instagram. I got a million followers on TikTok. It's like, is that because it's more of an international thing or if it's, you know, huge overseas? I don't, I don't know, know, but my favorite thing to see is people in their profile when they put their amount of followers on TikTok on their Instagram profile. Right. And I'm just like, I'm just like, who fucking cares? Right. Bro? Or, the, or the booty models that are like, cancel that 947K. Oh my fuck, <laughs> shut up. You were never a somebody. No. You're still a fucking nobody, dude. Yeah. You don't need to fucking tell me that you were canceled at 80K. Or fucking, I have fucking 200K on fucking TikTok, so take me seriously. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. No one cares about you. No. Those, it's, it's 240K bots. That, yeah, that that's care. what it is, dude. Yeah. And if you have so much on TikTok, go back to fucking TikTok. <laughs> exactly. Go back there. Yeah. We don't need you over here on Instagram. On TikTok, or you're like, I got 13K on Insta. Like, yeah, you don't do it in reverse. Yeah, dude, it's fucking stupid. Nobody promotes down. Yeah. And you can, I'm not saying like, post your fucking link tree or whatever. Like, post your link tree and put your TikTok. Yeah, fucking link it all. But don't give me your fucking stats, dude. I don't need your <laughs> analytics in your fucking profile. What's your RBI? Dude? dude, I don't need your baseball card stats on your Instagram profile, dude. Yeah. It, it, it makes me respect you oh so much less. <laughs> Is it possible to respect someone negatively? Mm. Like, oh, I, I lose all. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, one of my good buddies has it on. I'm like, dude, take that the fuck off your profile, bro. <laughs> you thirsty motherfucker, dude. Yeah, I think that like uh, people that care about that stuff. I'm one of them right now, but I'm hopefully soon not to be one of them. People that care about that stuff. There's a there's an inauthentic inauthenticity to their content like the people like yourself that don't give a fuck about it you just making content you're putting it up there and people can see how real it is yeah well listen i'm not saying that you shouldn't care about it because trust me i care too it's i check business. my analytics yeah i check my numbers i try to see what content hits if i'm putting out a reels i'm i'm really caring i'm trying mm -hmm. i mean, i think the problem with me is like i care too much that's why I don't put out a lot of shit because I'm like, ah, I don't, 
I don't know if this is, you know, like yeah. you should care. You, yeah. But you don't need to like outwardly. Uh, it just feels very. Uh, it's like wearing your heart on your sleeve a little bit. Yeah, but but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. You're like, look at my heart on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. Just fucking wear it on your sleeve, dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like the guy that walks around with a motorcycle helmet just to show people I ride a motorcycle. <laughs> my favorite are the guys that don't actually have a motorcycle. They're just walking around with the helmet. Yeah, I respect that more than the other guy, <laughs> to be honest. I just want you to like me. Here's yeah, fucking good. You're damaged. I, I <laughs> yeah. like that. Go for it, dog. Yeah. But like, dude, no one, uh, we don't need to, we know, we get it. Yeah. You're a fucking, you're a, you're a bad guy, yeah. dude. You're a tough guy. Sweet e-bike, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's fucking sweet, dude. Good Honda Ruckus you got going there, bro. <laughs> what is that? 49 cc's of pure power. Flip How it. many you got on TikTok, by the way? <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, bro. Do you have a motorcycle channel by chance? But yeah, you should care about the content. Yeah, oh yeah, I definitely care about the content to the point where like I have a goal of putting three clips of each week's show out. Uh, but if it's just not there, if the if I know that like this needs to be expressed in a longer form, I won't clip it. Mm -hmm. So like this week got one clip, maybe two for tomorrow. But like uh, for for this pod, no, this uh, this will probably get oh, I was four just say, or five Dan, clips. You're already fucking. This is coming out in 13 weeks. I've done 10 pods this week. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Because I, I... I'll be fucking... Who knows where I'll be by then, bro? In memoriam. I might have... Yeah. I might have <laughs> to fucking... I might have to email, uh, email you be like, yeah, dude, we can't talk about the live tour, dude. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're back on the PGA, dude. We're yeah, leveraging we're, again. We're, I'm actually playing on the PGA tour, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the time this comes out... <laughs> I got a new title of sponsorship. Um, yeah, you want to you want to put out like you know we're trying we try to do the same thing which is like two or three clips, but I'm always the one that's like that clip fucking sucks. Don't put it out, but we still need to put something out. So, right, you know. Yeah, when I uh, produce for other larger comics, they want to see like six clips op clip options, and then they're gonna go let's put these two out and let's save this one for a couple of days and let's burn these two. Yeah, yeah. that that's like that's a good model. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well just chop up a couple of different things. Not everything needs to be funny. Some things could be like informational or like inside baseball type shit. Or People like weird. That. Yeah. Any throw of that. a fucking throw that weird background noise on the YouTube shorts and uh mm -hmm. I mean that's all I get marketed is is YouTube shorts, is podcast clips now. Mm-hmm. Shorts are doing great for us. Oh good. Yeah. Good. Cause I go back into the creator studio mm -hmm. on my laptop after I post it on my phone. And I'll do all the SEO and I'll retitle it and I'll yeah. put all the tags in there. Shorts do well. Yeah, that got, that, got, that helped our YouTube account grow. I mean, we 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 you know have done very well on Instagram. I've done very well on TikTok in the past year. Or so YouTube was like a very slow build. Yeah, but it finally like the shorts really popped it up and the numbers are starting to finally like catch into the algorithm a little bit. Yeah. Do you guys have a separate clips channel for your podcast? Um, no, we have a separate channel for full podcasts. But the channel um, for only uh, uh, our our clips, we'll just throw clips on our main channel. Oh, we have a separate channel for, for full, episodes. full episodes. Yeah, interesting. Because uh, yeah, I uh, I've been saving my sixteen nine clips to start another channel because they are doing so well on the shorts. But it yeah. is it is typical for most a lot of podcasts that are at least clipping to like have the separate. Yeah, I think so. I think. Um, I like I, I think now it's like the most people that you see you know have the second clip channel is because their main channel has already popped right so it's a good way to make more money yeah but if you're starting out with a low number of subscribers you want it to get it to pop first mm -hmm. so you want to start with these short clips maybe that'll get the subscribers this is where our head was at was like yeah. we don't want to throw up full podcasts have someone like one of our short form content and then immediately click out on the next video because it's like an hour long right you get what i'm saying and it drives your overall channel retention down exactly exactly so that was our thing was like all right we're gonna stop posting full podcast episodes we'll do a separate channel for that mm -hmm. but on our main channel that's where our like our YouTube content lives. Yeah. So full matches on Fridays we release and then like we have like little shows that we release on Tuesdays. We're like I'll do like a daily um or weekly golf roundup, 
you know, Jake has this thing where he like tries to break par on every course, like like little one off video type shit. Yeah. And then full matches, you know, me and Blake versus um, blah, blah, blah. You know, full match on, Fridays. Full match Fridays. That's yeah. awesome. And so that way people like for that content, you know, oh, yeah, you guys have a podcast. Cool. We'll go find that. Sounds like you got it pretty well dialed in. We're fucking dialed, bro. Yeah. It's a fucking business right now. Yeah. It's not making the most money. But it is coming. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah this like, is but be... all all the like all the gears are moving. Right. So once it really pop pops, like it's gonna, we're gonna be fine. It's gonna be know? the golf version of Dude Perfect. You fucking goddamn right it is. Dude, that's yeah. That's the good days right you there. Goddamn right it you is. You and twenty five of your closest friends are all driving Ferraris. Oh, dude fucking can't wait bro to be a tesla boy dude <laughs> yeah. and get out of this fucking rented dodge dart yeah um it is funny that right before i got that call to be on this like golf trip i had played around with my buddy up at tory pines which is a very nice golf course mm -hmm. in san diego and at the end of the round i snapped every single club in my bag and was like, I will never fucking golf again. I had a shitty round. I played horribly, got a little drunk, snapped club by club at the end of the round and was like, fuck this. The I'm, whole bag? The fucking whole bag. Did you keep them? Did I keep what? The snap clubs. No. I them? left them at the course, <laughs> snapped the fucking bag. And my buddy was dying laughing. I was like, I don't ever invite me out. I'm never playing this dumb fucking game again. It's over with. And then literally four days later, I get the call from Jake like, hey, we're going on this golf trip. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm fucking down. I had to go to Roger Dunn and put together a shit house bag of like hand-me-downs and shit. Yeah. And now it's my fucking job, dude. It's my fucking career. Yeah, that's quick too. Oh, it was quick. Yeah, it's just a little over two years now. Uh, a little over two years. Yeah, we started the podcast um, probably late 2021. The trip was, was, oh no, I'm sorry. We started the podcast late 2020. Yeah. I think. Because that first trip was April 2020. Yeah, so right? maybe, That's no, even, it was a little after April. It was a little after April. That yeah. was when I moved to LA. So yeah, yeah, it was, the podcast is almost at two years now. That's explosive growth. It was very, years. very explosive yeah. growth. Yeah. It does help that there's four guys promoting it, right? You know? Well, like, four guys promoting it. Um, then we partnered up with this company, Friday Beers, that, that, kind of helped us yeah. and then it's also like not even the promoting bro it's it's really the work that we've done yeah you know growing the account with memes growing the account with the original content posting shit like that um and yeah yeah and four guys promoting it yeah you know it's the work of four guys yeah yeah if i had three other guys yes i, I can't say that my show would be any bigger than it is now but yeah um, I mean, it is hard too because you're you know, work. working in a group project. Someone guy is always going to be working harder at one aspect. Yeah, and we're just we're starting to like figure out that um, power dynamic. Exactly. Some bro. guys are stronger at this. Let's let it, them do that. Exactly, this guy's really good at bro. this, and then you know it takes yeah. a minute to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But and once it, you get it dialed, I mean, it's like a fucking Yeah, it's been two machine. years of dialing it in. I mean, every yeah. podcast guest that we've had on, we've asked them about what equity we all should have in the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, just like a full on, full on, like, make the guests feel uncomfortable and be like. <laughs> Talk about money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So funny, dude. Whose sister was that that came on recently? <laughs> oh, that was Jake's sister. Okay. So Jake, like, Jake is kind of, not the money guy, but he's like the, the mommy manager guy. Yeah. He's, he's. He really is like the behind the scenes workhorse, mm -hmm. you know? Um, uh, and so like, it was always like, this is split four ways and we've had to figure out like, all right, well you are, he is kind of pulling more, but at the end of the day, you can't be paying, you can't be like, this guy gets 50% and then you guys, cause the, the group yeah. will never last. No. So it needs to be even, we'll just figure out a way how can you reduce your workload and I can pick up some of the slack, Yeah, you know, on this or that. And so we've kind of dialed that in a little better, um, especially with all this content being filmed. It's a little easier on him. And we have like good people behind us yeah. that are helping us with editing, helping us with, you know, recording and shit like that. That's huge. When you can just focus on creating the content mm -hmm. and then it's like, all right, let me see what you make out of this. But even then he's still like, he wants to focus on this back shit. I'm like, all right, well then get a job at CAA, bud. I don't know what the fuck you want me to tell you, bro. Cause you're better at that. Yeah. You know, I'm just not good at that back dealing with sponsors, shit like that. Yeah. Some people enjoy it. They, and he fucking does. Yeah. But at the end of the day, 
that doesn't mean that now you're taking a bigger share. Right. You know, we may give you a finder's fee for some things. Sure. But also you're selling us as the product. You're not selling you. Yeah. You know, and his sister came in and sat in one of our meetings and was like literally echoing everything that I had been telling him for years mm -hmm. to his face. And I'm like, dude, I fucking love you. Can you please come out here all the time? And also I will be calling you to get him in shape. Yeah. You know, because his mindset just doesn't, doesn't like it's just not the same mindset as me like whereas like i want this to last so it needs to be an even split and whatever you can do to reduce your workload let me know and i can tell you some things i can't do yeah but also some things that i do you can't do you know so it's like right it's all this fucking it's, or whatever that sales job would be paid to someone else like if he stops doing it you got to hire a guy right the, and that's what i would prefer over him doing it because at least we can outsource that and it's not going to create this rift of like this guy's making more money in in sure. the pod and these other two guys are not and it's like it's just i just i want to leave money out of it yeah that way the the group dynamic can last you know it's tough and it's very yeah. tough yeah it really is yeah we it, have a, we have a, a weird split here mm-hmm um, but that doesn't mean that every dollar that comes in the door is split with because he, he's got more shares than I have. It's a project by project basis. Sure. If I bring it in, produce it, shoot it, edit it, send it out the door, I'm taking 95% of it. 7% is going to the house and yes. you can have 3% for you know being my partner or whatever. That's 102%. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because that's, that's what you got to give it in this business. You got to give it 102%. <laughs> It's like that is a weird split, dude. Yeah. So basically, you're paying out of pocket to give to people. That's a weird split, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah. I'm very generous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-five, seven, three. Then like fourteen goes to bills. Yeah. Well, I'm independently wealthy. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. My <laughs> girlfriend's wealthy. I'm so. not. I'm not in it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we all are, dog. We are. Yeah. But the independent I, wealth is running out. I hate that shit, bro. I'm not in for Yeah, you fucking are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shut yeah. the fuck up. <laughs> or they go, I do comedy just for the crowd, for you guys. No, you don't. Nope. No, you fucking don't, dude. You want to be on TV having a special like everybody Yeah, else. do you think I do comedy to make other people laugh? No, I do it so they laugh and I feel good about myself, dude. Yeah. You think I'm wishing you a happy birthday so you can feel good on your birthday? No, this is strictly so I don't feel bad for not remembering. Fucking people are dumb. People are dumb. And don't go to comedy shows on your birthday. Yeah, don't do that. That's dude. bad for you. Don't do that. And if dude. you are, don't sit in the front row. Oh, but you're going to bring a group anyway. You're going to yeah. take up a whole fucking side table. And then everyone at your table is going to point out your birthday. And I'm not going to give a fuck. Yeah. And I'm going to hope you get asked to leave. My last gig had a birthday party on the right from stage. It was to the right. And then... Stage right is what they call that in the business. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're a theater guy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. stage left, mm -hmm. halfway through my set, 16 bachelorettes come in. Ooh, that's fun. And that, yeah, that was a, fuck, let's see if we can get them to fight kind of thing. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a East Coast, West Coast battle yeah. right there. That was dope. They were all wearing black dresses. It was like the battle of the black dress. Yeah, I had one, I had one like bachelorette party. We used to do a shitty bar show in the back room and the whole, the back room could fit maybe 20 people and 15 of them was like a full table of bachelorettes. And at one point I just sat down at the fucking table yes. and went head on with the, the, with the bachelorette and was like basically doing literally a sit down back and forth with this. They love it. They fucking loved it. Yeah. And I loved it too. Like I, I it's their if, big night. If I can do no jokes yes. and just riff mm -hmm. and like make it present and uh, it was it was great. It was yeah. fun. Because that's something that'll only happen that night. It's their big night. And yeah. they're like, Oh, the comedian talked to me the whole time. It's like yeah. spotlights on them, like it's been since brunch. And now it's 11.30 at night and they're hammered. Yeah. And then I can just come back and be like, dude, I'm a fucking genius. Yeah. I didn't think of it. It was no joke. It was all off the top I'm of the so head. So good dude. at this shit, I'm dude. I'm fucking good at this shit. Where's your next show? It's fucking outside Pete's uh, after they close down. <laughs> Where's my trophy? This is world's greatest comedian. Yeah, dog. That'll last for a whole three minutes after that set. <laughs> yeah. It used to feel good, bro. It used to crush. <laughs> 
early and you'd be like for like days after now it's like it's literally chasing that high it's like two minutes after your set you're like all right well yeah. what the fuck am i doing chasing now? the dragon oh my do you, god do you ever have such a good set that you like cancel a show the next day because you just want to ride that high for a second oh fuck no dude no <laughs> is that what you've done before if i have a good one i'm really? like i'm gonna i'm just gonna sit in this one for a couple of days i'm not gonna go oh, to a mic or anything oh that's cute dude yeah. that's cute good I'm for a you huge pussy good for you dog. Yeah. no i'm a big masochist bro okay. if i have a good set i will try to ruin it as best as possible that night or you know the next night with the booking you know oh you'll just go straight straight to your next spot and be like let's see if we can fuck this up yeah not like bomb but like you know that was always like when i was coming up like uh, as far as like really grinding the open mic scene was always like if we had a good one you know we would do like three four spots in a night and if we had a good one it was always like all right we can't end on something good yeah you always have to end on like the humbling experience it was like my mindset. I would go for me. It's the other way around. Like if I'm if I'm hitting multiple mics, it's like bomb, bomb, bomb. I'm like I'm gonna be hitting these motherfuckers until I have a good one, and then I'm going home. Fortunately, now there's a midnight mic, so oh, over there at Third Wheel. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's a cool spot. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Every show I've done there is good. I I haven't done any of the mics there, but I heard they're 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 yeah. fun. We don't, you're beyond mic, and I'm assuming no, not down here, bro. The really? Fuck? Oh yeah, I can fucking uh, I should be miking more than I am. Let's go. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm a golfer, bro. Oh. I got this PGA Tour and Live event coming up. I right. got to train for. Well, and you're gonna take your um, minivan. Your oh, car. I'm I'm taking the fucking dart on the road. He goes, yeah, there's no mileage limit. I go, cool. I'm taking this to fucking Indiana, bro. Yep. You better call my references. And I'm leaving it there. I'm fucking leaving it in Indiana. <laughs> at the curb, not even at the rental car. Place. Yeah, that old Louis bit is great. Well, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. I it's told you there. where it was. Yeah. 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 So, oh, I guess we'll just pick it up then. Yeah, okay. All right. Guess you, you will. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's end on this. Uh, I usually have like one last question about food. In your case, I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your go-to snack Ooh. at the golf course? Like on the golf course? Yeah. Like, I mean, dude, an Uncrustable is so fucking money. Right. Like, of course, Glizzy's at the turn is always the play. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, nice Glizzy on the turn is good um usually i'm i'm more of like a blt avocado guy all right call at nine blt avocado mm -hmm. um but like as far as just if you got a snack to bring if you got an uncrustable and that shit frozen you throw that in the bag mm -hmm. by whole six or whatever it's warmed up just a little bit still got a little yeah. cold tinge to it dude it is fucking money dude a little sugar heater on the six. Oh, a little heater dude yeah. a little heater a little drink a little little dart yeah dude you're fucking having a great day and what's the drink is it beers or bloodies or what um i'm kind of all over the place bro i'll take a beer i'll take a bloody i don't i don't I don't care either way. Is it way. a beer hole or is it? Uh, it's bloodies in the morning. Yeah. Bloodies in the morning. No, I'm not a big drinker. I'm not a big drinker. So yeah. like bloodies in the morning, maybe a beer at the turn, but I'm never really getting bombed on the golf course. I'll tell you what I have been doing is uh, me and my buddy Stotts, Blake, um, have been doing a little bit of acid out there on the course. Just a little. It's just a little scotch. Yeah. Last time he did it was a little more than a scotch. A little dabble, do you? Yeah. It was. It was he goes, yeah. This this stuff's a little mild, a little milder than the last stuff we took. So I took a little more. It wasn't milder. No. No. We got to the end of the round, and I couldn't remember anything that happened on the course. That's the funny thing about acid. It doesn't kick in for so long, dude. I and you would, end up taking more and freaking out, dude. I was frying by like hole eight, hole four. I was like, this is good. Hole six, I was like, I think I'm peaking. Hole eight, I'm in another fucking dimension, dude. Yeah. And still able to make contact with the ball. That was my next question. Still, at, somehow, I don't know how I wouldn't just shank or top or miss. Dude, I was making contact. Fine. How, how did you find the ball? Oh, yeah, it was a scramble, baby. So it didn't really matter. I say that like I assume everyone is always in the rough like I am. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, how did you dude, find I'm, your ball? It's I'm like a professional, bro. Because it's probably on the fairway. I'm a professional <laughs> amateur golfer, dog. Okay? I'm not bad. Yeah, yeah. You, you could find the ball. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like... Uh, and if I did hit a bad one, which I don't think I lost any balls out there, I would have just left it. I don't give a shit. There's right. three other people that are hitting yeah. that aren't... Two other people that aren't on acid. And you got a ball sponsorship. So. Oh, dude, we got something. Yeah. We got a little something, something. Something, something. Yeah, nothing that I'm going to promote, but, you know. That's cool. We got a little something. We got a little back alley deals going on, maybe. 
some black market golf oh, deals. Yeah, dog. We get our used clubs 50% off, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Holler at me, bro. Dude, they got to do something with all that tour shit that they give, like, the pros, right? They give them a bag. They give them all the unlimited clubs. Like, those guys go through clubs. Like, baseball guys go through bats, right? So, like... Well, these companies are getting better now at, like, marketing towards... I mean, you just need the bigger platform, you know? And once yeah. our platform gets to a certain place, then we know that we'll be getting reached out by these companies to, like... You know, because these, these companies know the eyes are there. I mean, we yeah. did like 30 million views the last month on like one tournament content. Yeah. So it's like they, they're they seeing the, the benefit of that. But if Tiger goes through like nine clubs in a weekend, right? Nine drivers. He's like, I don't think him. he does though. But when he's getting fit, maybe. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's got to go somewhere, right? It's got to go. I mean, of course, anybody would want Tiger's huge shit, but like for everybody down the line, it's got to be like the stuff that didn't make the fitting has got to go. Oh, yeah. Somewhere still in the marketing sold. budget. That shit gets sold Does it? Uh, out the out the back door. Yeah. All that shit. Well, it sounds you know? like they need to be giving that shit to you guys. I don't want. What do, what do you think? I want fucking Tiger's used clubs? <laughs> what, what, do, what do you think I am, dude? I don't know. You First of all, you think I'm a professional golfer and now you're like, Sorry. yeah, you should be getting the used bullshit that they didn't want. <laughs> Sorry for the fucking, respect. What the fuck is this, bro? <laughs> I come to the principal's office. I expect a little bit of respect. Uh, that's and what, you're thinking that. No, I want the brand new shit. Okay, I don't okay. want the Dodge Dart of fucking golf clubs. I want the specifically fitted for me. Someone else could have my hand me down. <laughs> All right, I can have your hand me down. Yeah. Fucking ridiculous, man. Uh, I apologize if I offended you. Apology accepted, Isaac. Uh, man, I, and I will gladly drive your minivan around for you. Thank you, bro. In, uh, I appreciate as that, a dog. To my, uh, I will put you on my references for the next enterprise rental I have. You can borrow my credit card, man. Oh, yeah, dude. That's what my fucking mom called me. Do you want my credit card? No, mom. I'm 35. I don't have one out of principle. I don't have one out of fucking principle, dude. Well, um, I, hope, I hope you get one for free from one of your financial sponsors. Soon. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> and um, do you have anything else you want to plug before we wrap this up? Uh, no, just follow me everywhere. Socials is Mark Smalls. Um, and then uh, on um, Twitch, it's Mark Smalls Live. If, you, uh, if you're a fan of video games, you want to come fuck with me, watch me fry out on some little kids or beat up some old men. Either way, it's uh, twitch.tv slash Mark Smalls Live. Follow the podcast at Country Club Adjacent if you're into like funny golf shit and just funny shit in general. That's where I'm at. Is the Twitch all Call of Duty or is it other games? No, I kind of quit Call of Duty. So now it, it's mostly shooters. Um, sometimes I'll do, I'll, I'll like react to YouTube videos and stuff like that. But mostly shooters, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty, shit like that. All right. Yeah. Looking, looking forward to the new Call of Duty coming out? I am. I am. We'll see. Hopefully it's got better anti-cheat and it's just a better game because mm -hmm. the game right now is very stale yeah. yeah well it's been out for a while it's been out for a while but they did make fucking 10 billion dollars off of it so you'd think they'd put a little <laughs> money back but no they take, don't take the money and gun yeah uh mark smalls thank you very much for coming thanks for having me brother really appreciate, appreciate it bro. we'll see you next time everybody